Everyone knows Marianne and Rebecca. If you have any issues or problems, please put your hand up. They'll be there to coach as well. And our lovely cameraman, Adrian, um, as you're moving around, just watch the cameras. Um, please don't knock them over. They look really expensive, okay? <laughs> um, I'm microphoned up, okay? So when it comes to do the demonstrations, which we're about to do in about 30 seconds, I will try and sit closest to the therapist so your voice will be picked up. During this two days, expect to screw a lot of things up. This is the two days of making mistakes. Who cares that it's on camera? Okay, the very fact you're willing to come here and do this, um, you should be very, very proud of yourself because this is not an easy environment to be in. But also as well, I'm not up the front here to say, oh, you got that wrong. Give me your certificate back. You don't deserve it. Not the case, okay? My goal is to expand the way you guys do things individually. You don't have to do it like me, and you shouldn't want to do it like me. I want to show in this two days how you can bring your own personality into things and hypnotise the people the way that you feel comfortable doing it. Okay? So I do want to get started with this. What I do need is two lovely volunteers who want to come up and start something. Okay? We need two people, so decide amongst yourselves. Yep, Jackie, do you want to come up? Yep, come on up. Have a seat. We need one more person, looks weird. Yep, Matt, come on up, excellent. Guys, give him a round of applause. Excellent. Have a seat, you guys will be facing each other. Okay, it's a little bit awkward at that point. Okay, um, I might get you guys just to move back just a little bit, give yourselves a bit more room. Okay, so for the rest of you, sort yourselves out, bring yourself close so you don't have to sit in that configuration. Okay, and then um, we're gonna get started on everything. You guys comfortable with those chairs? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, nice and close. Wow. <laughs> this is good. Okay. We just like doing it in circles. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be very, very casual training, guys. There's nothing formal here. We just look formal, which I think is nice. Everyone dressed up. It's lovely. Okay. Yes. All right. Adrian, are we good to go? Yep. Excellent. All right. So um, best place for us to start is to just find out where you guys are as far as doing therapy on each other, okay? So decide amongst yourself who wants to be the therapist, who wants to be the client. You will have to have a real problem if it's a client. I'll be the client. Client, okay, so now you're the therapist. Yep. You've been indirectly chosen, okay? So all I want you guys to do is start a conversation, which is what's the problem, how do you feel about it, and we're gonna pick it up from there. Where we go from here, I have no idea, but our goal here is just to tease out the principles, to find out where they get caught, to find out what's occurring, to find out how far can Jackie get through the conversation, how many moments can she see, but how well can she restrict herself by trying to solve the problem. That's all. Yay. Yeah, indeed. So I want to sit close to you just because we've got the microphone and I'm going to watch Matt as well. So um, please start, just start the conversation. Then at certain times I'll say, Jackie, just hang on there. What just happened or are you getting confused? What do you think you could say next? We're just gonna go from there. From this exercise, guys, we will send you guys off in a little individual exercises based on the principles that we pick up from this little intervention, okay? okay. Please start away. All right, so Matt, what's your problem today? Um, <clears throat> procrastination. procrastination. Making decisions and then putting them off and wanting a better option, so I procrastinate, so I'd like to so figure that out. Procrastinating in the doing or procrastinating? Yeah, Doing, okay, yeah. so you make your decisions, but it's the actual doing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking for a better option all the time. You're looking for a better option mm, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to be wrong. You don't want to be wrong. No. I, I Fair enough. Not. I get that. Yeah. So I look at all the facts, and then I can't get going because I've got too many options too there. Too many options. So, yeah. I'll be back and I don't like it. I, I want to be decisive. You want yeah. to be decisive, yeah. Definitely. yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's holding you back. It's holding you back. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And let's pause it right there. Good job so far. Okay. Something that Jackie's doing very, very nicely. Very nicely indeed. Does she look nervous? Okay. Why would this be a good thing? Don't want to scare him. Don't want to scare him. This is really important. Mine only seems small, but remember, these are the principles. If Jackie was up here nervous, fidgeting with her hands or moving around a lot, that can be construed as an instruction for Matt to do the same. Okay? Now think about the environment Jackie's in. We've got the cameras here. You guys are really, really close. She's getting recorded. 
this is a type of attitude you want to take in with your clients, okay? And this is just a small thing. That's fine. You fake it till you make it. I know you're nervous. I can see little things that are occurring, but I want to bring your attention to it. No, I'm nervous too. Yes. Okay. So let's pause right there. What I want you to, let, let's break down. Let's do this really, really mechanical. What do we know so far about Matt? What has he told us? Okay, yeah, so there's something to do with more decisive, something to do with decisions. But doesn't want to be wrong. Who picked up on that? Yes, okay. Now, the very fact Matt wanting to be wrong, that's all we can take so far from this conversation. Okay, if we jump straight into our, well, I'll go into my procrastination routine, or maybe this person needs more energy to do the things, more focus, we are now guessing. Okay, um, the question I'm going to ask you, and this is for everybody when you do these exercises, is from what, what Matt's told you, and you might have to recap again just to find out where he is, what are you curious about right now? What are you wondering about? I'd probably be asking why... Why is being wrong such a big thing? Excellent. So I'll pick it up from there, have a chat to him about that, and let's just see what happens. I will pause here and there just to point things out, but uh, let's pick it up from there. Okay, so you don't like procrastinating. No. You feel you're sitting there all the time, so you don't like to be wrong. Why, no. is, why is being wrong such a big thing? Um, I, I don't want to come across like I don't know what I'm doing. I want to be really professional. So you don't want to come across like you no, don't know what you're doing? No. What happens if you come across like you don't know what you're doing? I don't know. Because and let's pause it right there. Did everyone see what happened right then? Yeah. What, it, what happened to Matt? Went into Trump. Big unconscious mm. moment. Mm. Okay. So do you see the difference in... Right now, did you aim for that? Did you try and make him... No. Kind of. Okay, you're just asking questions, right? Okay, but the very fact Jackie asked the right question about what, which was I don't want to be wrong. We could have got dis, um, uh, derailed from all the other things Matt said, and we're in the first 20, 30 seconds of this chat, but right now he's just stumbled across an unconscious moment, which means that as we keep going, and even though we're pausing, it'll still come up again naturally anyway, um, whatever Matt's going to come out of that when he comes out with the information, now we're heading on the right track. Okay, can you see that clearly already? And this is nothing new. You guys have seen this over and over. Okay, but again, the good thing Jackie's not doing because I have restricted her, we're not going into, I'm going to solve it. Okay, so let's pick it up from there um, and let's just see how far we can get into this and let's see what happens to Matt. Yes, yeah, I do. Good one. Yeah. What did you say? Did you say it for me again? Um, <clears throat> you asked me a question about what it was like to be wrong, I suppose. Or yeah, what, what, what happens like. if you feel, what, what happens if you do if come you across as unprofessional? I don't know, because I don't do things that would place myself in that situation. So okay. I, don't, I don't know. How does it make you feel to, to consider that, though? I'm scared. It makes you scared? Oh, yeah, very scared. Yep. Scared of...? Um, uh, loss of face. Um, I have a very yeah. high standard, so I so want that across everything I do. Yeah. Loss of face yes, is how people definitely. see you. Well, not, well, they don't, but I'm scared of that. Yeah. You're scared of how oh, they yeah. might see you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I, I just. Well, I don't want that to happen. I suppose it hasn't happened. Like, so it hasn't actually happened? No. It's not something that's actually happened no, for you? not really, no. Okay. So how does it feel actually knowing that, that this isn't actually something that's happened? Really yeah. good. Really good, really good. Yes, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So you do feel really good about that? Yeah, I do. Yes, yes, definitely. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. So in actual fact, it's not something that's happened and no. you feel good that it hasn't happened? Yes. It's a pretty good place to be though, isn't it? It's excellent, yeah. I've never thought of it that way before, but yeah. Okay. I'm just frightened of it happening. And let's pause right there. Brilliant job. Did everyone just notice what? It was very quick. We got Matt to a very good place. Very good job. Okay. Nothing hypnotic, is it? Okay, it's just Jackie being there, listening to Matt. Something happened that was very interesting. Matt fell into a good place, and then what happened? It was very, very quick. Brought the fear back. Did everyone see that? 
okay? Um, and this is what I mean by these unconscious moments. And yes, I've chucked you guys in the deep end. We're going to expand on this and, and talk to you guys about what I'm seeing and, and what we're hearing. Is Jackie took him to a good place. It's like he went into that small trance, felt something, and then backtracked out of it. Okay? This is the difference between getting a client to an unconscious moment, keeping them there, or allowing them to move away from it. As soon as you allow them to move away from it, that fear comes back and it happens very, very quickly. Okay? Um, so with that, knowing that, where would you take Matt? Back to the feeling. Good. Excellent. How would you do that? So, so I get that you, you know, it does frighten you, this idea, but going back to how you were feeling just before, going back to actually this hasn't happened, it's no, never happened no, to you. No, it hasn't, no. Yeah, and that actually gives you a really good feeling that it's it never does. happened. It does, it actually. Yeah, yes. so how it do does. you think you can take that good feeling? What can you do with that good feeling? Pause right there. Excellent. Okay. Um, what's happened right now? Good place to be. Anyone pick up on it? I made him think. Definitely made him think. Um, and then something happened after that. And this is not a criticism at all. What happened? We got the resource which was feeling good, the thinking. And then what did you ask him to do? I can't remember. So could you yeah. the interruption was... I know, I know. So as soon as uh, we start saying things like, what could you do with this? Or how would you use this? We're now telling them how to solve their problem, okay? It's very, very small, but we're not there yet. Does that make sense? Okay, um, and I, I will pause on purpose because I want you to see those different things. Um, as soon as we start to ask a client, how could you use this? How could you do this? How could you do that? The very reason our client's here is because they don't know how to do that, yep. okay? And it's small words like, how could you, compared to what could you do with this? Okay, see the difference? Yep. It's a subtle nuance. By asking someone, how could you deal with this? The very reason they're here is because they can't. And then they will get confused, but not in a good way. Yep. But if we're asking things like, so you're feeling this, I wonder what you could do with that. It actually makes it feel even better or something like that. Really, really small. Does that make sense? Okay. So from here, we're going to pause that exercise just for now. Okay, we're going to leave this open-ended because I want you guys to go away and do the same thing. These little exercises are going to happen very, very quickly. All you're going to do is get into groups of two and I want you to do what Jackie did so well, which was just to question the problem. Don't try and solve it. Don't try and get it to a certain place. I just want you guys to chat for maybe three or four minutes. One therapist, one client, okay? And I'm going to walk around and I just want to see where you guys are in regards to how natural can you keep this. There's certain things I want to look for that I might uh, stop you guys from talking about, or I might say, hey, I'm seeing this happen, you know, let's do this instead, that sort of thing, just to get you guys in the same speed of these guys, and then we're going to bring up another demonstration and start to pick it up from there. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, think of what's just occurred already from Jackie's little intervention for a minute or so. Matt's already found something positive, that good thing came through, and it only occurred because Jackie picked up on the unconscious moment, which was, I feel the fear or something like that. And that spontaneously came out of that. Now, in the contrast to that, if we're sitting here saying to Matt, okay, so you're feeling procrastination, I'll give you what I mean. So Matt's feeling procrastination, and I might say, well, what could you do instead that would stop the procrastination? And that's really putting the pressure on. Yeah, not in a good way either. Because now I'm saying, solve your problem. He's not there yet. The reason he's talking to us and Jackie is because he's probably, and you can probably back this up, you've probably tried to figure out many ways to figure oh, it out. Oh, sure, absolutely, yes. Okay, so if we go into our routine too quickly to try and fix Matt, although we really want to, we're going to hit that barrier. And it's going to start an argument saying things like, well, I don't know how to fix it. No, nah, Matt, just really think about it. What's the top 10 things you could do? <laughs> well, I could do this, I could do this, I could do that. Consciously. Yep. This procrastination thing, who's noticed, wasn't even the problem. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with it. What was it? Something to do with fear. And we don't even know what it is because I'm purposely interrupting these things. Mm -hmm. So they're the things we have to find out. So what I would like you to do in your groups, one therapist, one client, get a real problem. Just chat about the problem, nothing else. Find out the details, find out the anachronisms of the problem. Find out anything you can find out without trying to solve it, without trying to do anything with it. And most of all, and this will probably be the easiest for everyone, don't try and understand it. Okay? So pair off. Just be aware as well so I don't have to yell with the microphone on. Uh, once I bring you guys back, we can just create this same sort of group and then we'll bring two new people up. Okay?
So how is that just warming yourselves up? Yeah, very warm. Okay, very warm. <laughs> okay, excellent. All right, so right now we're at a place where you've all been before, which is just having a general conversation. This is the basis of conversational hypnosis. Um, anyone have any issues with that little exercise? It's just hard trying to say something without trying to help them. Yes, <laughs> who found this? Okay, so thank you for that because that will leave us into our first exercise. See how this day is going to plan out? I'm going to get feedback from you guys and I want to address these, bit, these issues and little things along the way that's according to the group and not just what I think you guys should do. Okay, so um, with that in mind, do you want to come up as a... Do you want to come up? Give me a round of applause. Okay. I do need one extra person who wants to come up and uh, have a chat. Of course you can. Give her a round of applause. Okay. You guys are okay with those seats? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, are you both happy, I'm assuming, therapists? Yep. Okay. So Alana was the uh, client. Um, what I would like you guys to do is pick up from the same exercise. Okay. And the reason I've pulled you up, because it's a lot easier if you just do it and then we can sort this out according to yourself, is um, do the same thing again. And I'll be very curious about when you feel the need to start to help Svetlana. Okay, and my job right now is I'm going to point it out because I have a feeling I know when you're about to do it. And let's just see if we both get it right. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, guys, pick it up from there. Just start as natural as you can. Pick it up from uh, the very, very start. Let's just see what happens. Okay. Okay. How are you doing? Good, thank you. So, what are you seeing here today? Uh, I have a problem. It's, um, I think it's, uh, I feel, I feel, um, I feel kind of awkward being in a group of people. So I don't feel like I am. Um, I don't feel like I, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like they're judging me. You feel like the group, of, the group of people are judging you. Yeah. yeah. Or I'm scared that they're going to judge me. Or I'm scared that I'm going to say something wrong, and it's like, oh my gosh, she's, you know, they're going to, you know, say things. I think. Things. Let's pause right there real quickly. Mm -hmm. Great job so far. Can we tell the way Svetlana's feeling by what she's, her actions? And it's not to point around, put her more on the spot at all, but do you see how much Svetlana is um, expressing to us? Mm -hmm. The way she's moving? This is a great cue to know us as therapists that they're really talking about something that's important to them. If um, Svetlana's sitting there going, well, I feel awkward around people. You know, if they judge me, that'll suck, and I might say the wrong things. You know, that'll suck. Big difference in body language, right? Okay, it's not to put you on the spot at all, but just to show you how much that line is actually showing us by the, her mannerisms and her actions as well. Okay, so uh, excuse the interruption, I just had to bring that up. Please go ahead. What are you wondering about? Okay. So you're scared that people are judging you? Yeah. Yeah? So how does that make you feel? Apart from being scared? No, I don't know if, if that is the problem, or I don't know if the problem is, I don't know, even know what the problem is. You don't know what the problem is? No, but I don't know why this is happening. But you feel awkward in the group, is that what you're saying? No, or shy, I don't know which one. You're feeling shy in a group? Yeah. With a group of people? Okay. And on a one-to-one -one basis? Better. Better? So I wouldn't think, I wouldn't say I'm an introvert by nature, I'm not sure, but my own judgment of myself. I don't think I am an introvert, but it makes me think that could be perhaps um, introvert or extrovert. Did everyone see what happened then? Yeah. Okay, you're on the right track, keep going. Yep. Or extroverted, introvert, extrovert, extrovert, introvert, one of those. Okay, but you're not sure whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. It so what, what's your definition of an introvert? Because I'm not an introvert by nature, so it makes me think that I'm more like an introverted extrovert. Which means what? Good question. An extrovert that's... 
can you expand on that? I mean, what what exactly do you mean? Yeah, maybe. Uh, and pause right there. Like, um, Excellent. Okay, are you right on the cusp of what I know? The reason I don't want to let it too long because I don't want to go into it yet because there are some nuances I want to bring out. Janti did a fantastic job with that question. Okay, who has any idea about what Svetlana means? I wouldn't have a clue. And the very fact that the way she's expressing it, she knows something. She's feeling something. There's a certain scenario where she feels something. And her best description is, I'm an introverted extrovert, but when I'm not, I'm more extroverted when I'm not introverted. Can you see the confusion in that? No wonder she's lost in it. <laughs> Poor Svetlana, right? Okay. But we all have this, don't we? We have problems that we just can't... We, we have a feeling we know what it is. We describe it, but then we think, that's not even what it is. It's like this, but I can't quite describe it. You can hear the loop she's caught in. So this is a good place that if your client gets confused and you really don't know as the therapist what on earth they're talking about, you have to dig into that. The very nature of digging into it, she went into trance. Now, would you agree she, you have no idea what she's talking about yet? Good because I don't either. And that's the reason for this intervention working so well. Okay, so um, pick it up where you were. You might just have to do it naturally again. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so you were gonna explain the introvert, extrovert. It's almost like an extrovert just being shy or lost or not confident. Not confident. Yeah, maybe. You feel like you're not confident? Maybe. You're not sure? Yeah. What makes you think that you may not be confident? Just let it settle in for a second. Excellent job. Just let that settle in. Grab some tissues, guys. Just sit on that for a moment. Okay? Something very interesting has come up from this already. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's like that reality of kicked in like... And this is the bizarreness of our problems. And we'll get some tissues in a moment, okay? Um, it's like you have a feeling you know what it is, but when you finally realise that's not it, whoa then what is it then? It's like the only reality you could hold on to was that confusion. Once that gets questioned, that reality goes away and it feels like you've got nothing to hold on to, even though the thing you were holding on to was keeping you in the problem in the first place. Okay? Do you see the weirdness of what happens to our problems? Okay? Would that be a fair example of what's occurring? I'm sure. And that's why. Okay? Okay, so what I would like you guys to do is I'm going to get you guys to pair up again. Good job so far. Okay, I want you to do this exercise again. Okay, you can go with the same partners if you will. Let's just have this conversation. Don't try and do anything with the problem. Don't try and fix it. Now, do you see the very reality of me saying don't fix it? Do you see the difference? Was this, did this end up being the same place you were before with the conversation? No. Okay. And the reason you had no idea what it is, how could you fix it if you're as confused as she is? Yeah. So when I say, guys, get as confused as your client, this is why. Quick stuff, right? And we're only 20 minutes into the seminar, okay? So um, it's up to you. You can either have a break or you can get yours back. Make him cry if you want to, okay? <laughs> or I can have one of the girls take you for a walk. We did a really good job, okay? Um, this alone will be therapeutic in nature. We might address this a little bit later once the emotion's drained out of it. But what's happened here is um, the reality that Svetlana was holding on to, all those confusing, Janti questioned and she went, well, maybe that's, oh no, maybe that's not it. I've been holding on to this for so many years, whatever the case may be. Now I don't have that. We've opened up thinking. That emotion has to go somewhere. Does that make sense of what clearly has happened? See what I mean? Like, I can't teach this. It has to be live in the moment. Okay. So guys, pair off again, just four minutes, have a conversation. Don't aim for this, but if it happens, it happens, okay? And just have a chat, guys, okay? Very well done.
Very well done. I'm going to invest in a tissue company, maybe. Conversation Hypnosis Academy Tissues. Yeah, good job. Okay. So, uh, what have we done so far, realistically? Just having a chat. Okay. This starts the very way that I want you guys to interact from now on, taking the nuances from this training. Okay. Who felt nervous about going into these little exercises just then? Okay, who felt okay? Okay, um, see the contrast? Okay, and it could be the very fact that some of you have just trained recently, so you're still in that mode. For some of us, it's been a while since you've trained, but regardless, yes, for yourself, yes. Okay, now let me bring up a couple of important ideas as to why this could occur, just to keep in the back of your mind so you get something from just the interaction itself. Right now, we're doing nothing. Okay, and I've purposely set it up like that. We're going to start to add little bits and pieces into it. These are the main and common reasons about why we get nervous as hypnotists. Okay, I fell into this as well. Is because we're trying to do something with the conversation. Okay, we're going to get very restrictive very soon. Um, as soon as you start to try and do something with the conversation, you're trying to lead them towards an outcome that's based on your training. Does that make sense? Like I'm trying to steer the conversation to suit a regression. I'm trying to suit it to fix an Ericksonian learning story. I'm trying to fix it because I want to confuse the living daylights out of them. As soon as you start to do that, all it takes is your client not to, be, uh, not to agree with that unconsciously. And then while you're trying to do something, they're spending their time trying to block you. Right. Okay? The reason, again, why you get nervous and scared as well is because you're trying to figure them out. Very, very hard to do when they don't even know what the issue is. So how on earth can we figure them out if they can't them very selves figure themselves out? And the reason they're sitting in front of you is because they don't need figured out, they just need help. Do you hear the difference in that? Okay. They need the help without being figured out. They've spent many hours per day trying to figure it out. We all do it. We have a problem and say things like, why me? Why does this always happen to me? Why is it when I get one bill, all the bill comes? Or well, why is it when I go to work, my boss always yells at me? Is it me? Something I'm doing? Maybe I need to do this, this, and this? We've all done something similar to that, right? As you try and figure it out, you put yourself so deep inside the problem that it's very hard to get out. And that's where we as hypnotists come along and we intervene and we show them the things that they're not aware of. Okay? Now, the whole purpose of this little training exercise at the very start for the last half an hour is just to point out do you see, although it's just happened to a few people, more than I would have expected actually, you're already getting little things starting to come up and I haven't even told you to do anything with the conversation, you're just having a general chat. This is the difference between digging down into the problem in comparison to, I want to try and fix this. Okay. So with this, we need to contrast. I want to get two volunteers to come up the front and I want to have a chat. Well, you guys are going to have a chat. I'm not going to do anything. Okay. And the therapist... I want you to try and fix their problem as hard as you can. Give them advice, offer them solutions, <laughs> because I want to get a contrast, okay? Because once we have a contrast, by the end of day two, we'll be showing you guys essentially how you can give advice but without actually giving it, okay? To offer little hints of solutions along the way that somehow your client picks up on and the breakthrough they have at the end of the session, they go, oh, I'm just going to do this. And you think, no joke, I told you that half an hour ago. There's a difference between giving advice and offering advice. It's a very small nuance. That's where we're headed to. So uh, who wants to have fun with this little uncomfortable exercise of giving advice? Yep, come up, give me a round of applause, have a seat. Or right, either way. Let's get another person. One more person. Yep, come on, big fella. Give me a round of applause. You guys are happy with those chairs? We are now. Excellent. All right. Quite a height difference, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah. So, um, since you volunteered first, you can tell Phil what you want him to be client or therapist? Client. Client. Excellent. I'll move closer to you so we can pick up. So, your role is actually harder. 
Okay. Okay, why not, right? Yeah. You're going to start the normal conversation like, you know, what's the problem? Give me an example. Why is that a problem? How is that a problem? That sort of stuff. And then when you feel the need to, I want you to offer advice that comes to your mind. When offering advice, think, well, if that was my issue that Phil's giving me, how would I deal with it? And I just wanted to see Phil's reaction. Okay. He might take it on board and go, you know what, that's awesome. Or he might go, nope, I don't want to do that. And let's just see what happens, okay? So start nice and casually, let's see where we go. Great, how you going, Phil? I'm all right, yes, sir. So, um, what can I help you with today? I'm still procrastinating a bit. Procrastinating a lot. Mm. So, how does that make you feel? Frustrated. Frustrated? Yeah, so, definitely so, frustrated. So what about procrastination makes you feel frustrated? Well, lots of stuff to do and I'm not necessarily getting it done at time. Uh, why, why do you think you might might not be getting it done? I'm busy thinking about it and trying to work out which way I should do it, how I should do it, when I should do it. So why don't you just think about it and just do it? <laughs> That's what I was doing. Excellent. Well, let's pause right there. How did that feel, giving that advice? <laughs> <laughs> You're hearing in your voice. It's like, now Scott's sitting next to me. He's told me all these years not to say it, now I'm going to say it. What just happened to Phil though, this was really, really interesting. You couldn't plan this, okay? It stumped, it stumped him for a second, a split second, as he took on the suggestion, and then what did he do automatically? Rejected it, okay? Now, if Christian didn't hear this, you'd keep going down that road, okay? That's why we have to really pay attention to the answers they give us, okay? If you keep saying, well, um, if you've thought about it, it didn't work, just think about it another way. No, that doesn't work either. Yes, it does. I'm sure it does. How about you write a list? No, no, I've done that. Really? You've wrote a list? Yeah. Well, how about you write the 10 top things you should do? And this conversation keeps beating around the same circle over and over that gets nowhere except Phil gets frustrated, you get frustrated, and then all of a sudden it goes nowhere. Okay? So I'm going to pick it up from there. Again, let's give you more advice and let's just see what Phil does with this. So you see, you've already tried that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm already doing. And, and it's not working for you. That's what I'm here. <laughs> so why don't you try writing everything that you need to do down, and then go through the list and do them? Why would I want to do that? To help you not procrastinate. Okay. I suppose I could try that. Yeah. Pause right there. What are the chances Phil will actually do that? <laughs> <laughs> Did everyone notice as well what happened? Did everyone always hear the change of roles right then? Yeah. You could feel that, right? Did you notice that as well? And you actually backed up really, really nicely, and it was all in body language. Phil leaned forward and said one thing, then Krishna leaned forward even further and says, no, <laughs> I'm the therapist, don't you take my role. Okay? This is really important, okay? And we're doing this as a contrast exercise. Don't ever let your client take control of the conversation or the interaction. Especially if you do manage to say a bit of advice saying, oh God, I shouldn't have said that. It's out there, who cares? And the client says, well, why would I want to do that? I'm here to see you so you can help me. And then we get on the back foot and think, oh God, how do I get out of this situation? There's a lot of pressure at that point. Do you see the difference? These are, again, very small nuances. Okay, how do you feel from being this type of therapist compared to the one you're more accustomed to. Not good. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, we might have the very thing Phil needs, but Phil needs to come up with it. Okay. And later on in day two, we'll look at how we can almost promote that to happen. Okay. So we're going to do this again. We're going to backtrack. We're going to rewind, if you will. Okay. Take away the advice. Okay. And all I want you to do, and this is going to be the, not a restriction, it's the only thing I want you to aim for, is... Be so damn curious about why Phil is stuck in this problem and then create your questions from that. Okay? So start again, guys, and let's just see where this goes with that as an understanding. So you're saying you feel frustrated because you procrastinate? Yeah. Yeah, it gets frustrated. And what about the procrastination gets you so frustrated? Because I know that the jobs need to be done, the work needs to be done, the things need to be done. Why do they need to be done? Because they're there. Because they're there. Yeah. It's a list that doesn't go away. It's a list that doesn't go away? Why, why doesn't it go away? Because if I don't do it, it doesn't get done. And so it bothers you that it doesn't get done? Mm. Yeah, it does. So how would you rather feel? Better, knowing it's completed. 
So then, how would you go about completing it? And pause right there. Excellent job so far. <laughs> okay. Um, did you hear the question that came yeah. out? Okay, almost like offer a solution. We're not there yet, but it's a good place to be, okay? Let's understand something about what's happening with Phil's problem. Let's break this down, because something very interesting has come up. Again, you guys will have access to the training as well, so you'll be able to hear this stuff as I pointed out. What has Phil told us? There's something to do with procrastination, and there's something to do with some sort of frustration. Phil has just told us, and hopefully everyone heard this, that he knows what to do, and he knows how he wants to feel, so why is he not doing it then? Is anyone curious about that? Can you hear the bind he's caught in? I know what to do. I know the outcome. If I do do it, it's going to be fantastic. I just don't do it. Anyone curious about why that exists? Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes, you can definitely be. <laughs> it seems something small and trivial. We all have this again, right? We have things in our life we know we should do. We know the outcome. If we just put our foot down and do them, the outcome would be spectacular for our lives. We don't do it. Yes. He seems a bit frustrated when people when he said there's no one else. Did you pick up on that? And that was my next point. Mm. There's no one else. So no, this is this this is what you guys are here for to point these things out. Now let's assume some things if we could. Just just for the inner secrets of this course. Let's assume. Okay. There might be some trust issues with Phil about he's the only one that can do it properly. Mm. He maybe has been let down before. Maybe if he screws it up, at least he can blame himself and nobody else. Maybe he's never had someone he can trust fully enough to do it for him. Maybe the list doesn't exist in the first place he's just telling us. There's a lot of things that can happen from this. We could go into assumption and totally miss the, miss the, uh, miss the issue itself. So it's a great pickup. Okay? These are the things, not only do we listen to what our clients are saying, we listen how they're saying it. Okay? So... Um, We'll keep going. If you come to a point where you say, no, I don't know what to ask next, that'll be where I'll intervene and we'll let this uh, play itself out. So again, don't try and solve it. Don't try and do anything with it. Just be curious about how does that bind actually exist? Why is it there? Okay, so pick it up where you feel natural. So why do you feel like it's your list and that you have to do it? I don't have a support structure. So we don't have a support structure, so we just do. And what is it that you do? Well, so it, all the work that has to be done around the, the farm or whatever. And so what's the support structure that you don't have? We don't have any family that's around. And how does that make you feel that there's no support structure there? It just means that I have to, it, I'm the one that has to do it. It comes back to me. place to be excellent who would find themselves caught at this place as well like what do i do with all this information mm -hmm. okay this is where we have to be very careful of things this is when your advice wants to come out okay so good place to be okay what do we know so far what have we found out what what's the new information this the conversation is almost going around a bit of a circle which is fine what do we know so far there's no support structure so definitely no support structure um, no family to help no family to help yep it's just phil just phil yep what else? He feels like it's, it's his list and he has to do everything himself. Excellent. And that's where my mind goes. How does Phil get to the point of thinking it's his list and that he's the only one who has to do it? Okay, just bear that in mind for a moment. Yes? I also have a feeling it's overwhelming for It's too yep. much for him to take on. Mm -hmm. um, There's probably some of that in there. Yep. So what I'm going to get you to do before I offer some solutions or what we do next is who really knows what Phil's talking about? Who has, a, who has good content. So what I'd like you to ask him is, you know, giving him an example, okay? Just because we're really wide, there's something to do with the farm, there's a list, there could be chores, it could be a list of groceries he doesn't want to go get, or we know it's a, a, um, a subcategory of a list. So let's find out what list is he talking about or what exactly by getting some examples and then that'll probably narrow us down to a better solution, okay? Cool, so what are some, of, uh, what are some examples of... of things that are on your list that you need to do. Good. Have to finish fencing, finish an arena, put a shed up, fix another shed. That's just all, that's part of the list. That's part of the list. Mm. What else is on your list? They're the longer term ones, and it's just the normal stuff. 
interfacing and and let's pause right there. Excellent. So now we're getting some category. Okay, we're getting some context. Okay. Now we could all assume by Phil doing these things, he's going to get something positive from it. Yeah, shed, fencing is going to do something for his farm, going to do something for your business. It'll satisfy Phil in some way that he's completed something. So why is he not doing it? Okay, the support structure will come into it. Yep. Oh, I, I have a question. Yeah. I just feel like that this is just the surface. That's, that's not the real... Like, it feels like he's holding himself back. Mm -hmm. And there's something even deeper. Yes, further I agree. 100% agree. That okay. list is just... What yes. Right yep. And I don't want to. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to spoil it. Phil's actually told us something very interesting. I won't bring it up yet. Okay. But um, I agree with you 100. percent That list is there, but it's not the real um, problem per se. There's something else going on. And Phil, by Phil nodding just like that, it's like the unconscious mind has said, "Yep, you got me. You heard me. So we're on the right track." Just even having that belief. Um, is good enough to start pushing us in the right direction, okay? So knowing there's something in the list, um, again, don't get lost in the details, shed, fence, it's all the same thing, okay? Um, okay. I'm going to take your role for a second, just so I'm going to ask a couple of questions just to see where it goes. So like I was saying, I'll just sort of recap there, is you've got, the, you got fencing, you've got to do, there's shed, there's a certain things you're not doing it and things like that, and there's a list that you feel that you've got no support to be able to help you do it, Okay. So did you write the list? No, mental list. Okay. So what's stopping you doing the list that you've prepared for yourself? Time. Mm -hmm. So what's just happened right now? Something to do with time. Okay. Now that wasn't present before. Did nothing was fancy with the question. I had to find out, did Phil write his list? Did Kim write the list for you? Okay. Um, and she's saying, you better go out and do this. And he thinks, oh God, I don't want anything. That sounds boring. Okay, whatever the case may be. So there's something to do with time. Okay, it might not be it, but it's very interesting it's come up. Okay, now we can contrast to everything we procrastinate about, right? Don't we all say, I don't have time to do all that on my list? I don't have time to do this? Don't we all say things like this? Isn't that another excuse? It could be, it could come across an excuse, but there was a small unconscious moment beforehand which lets me know that it's more genuine other than an excuse. Okay, if he came and said, oh, it's just time, I don't have the time that's more surface, okay? So um, something to do with time, right? Okay, so when you were preparing the mental list, how much time did you give it in order to get those things done? I haven't allocated specific time to it. Okay, so we've just found out something else that's interesting. What have we just found out? Yeah, hasn't allocated, no wonder he's not doing it. Maybe he hasn't allocated the time or he's allocated enough time to think about it, but not allocated enough time to go out and do it. And there's those unconscious nods again. Okay, now again, I'm just pulling these questions out just to show you where they are, then we'll show you how to formulate them and things like that. But it's just to point out, are we trying to solve Phil's issue? Are we giving advice? Now, the advice at this point, we could say, well, I'm sure, Phil, you're wealthy enough to go get someone to build the shed for you. Yeah, good luck with it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there has to be something Phil's going to get personally from doing those things. Does that make sense? Okay. We can go down that road of offering this solution. I can say, you know what? I know someone who could do it for you at a really cheap rate, mates' rates. We can go down all that road, but that's not what it is. Okay. So um, just to backtrack again, you said there was something to do with uh, not allocating enough time to the list that you wrote, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how much time do you need to actually consider doing those jobs? No more than I have. Okay, as in? I've considered them enough, I just can get time to actually do them. Okay, so how long is enough do you consider it for before you decide whether you do it or not? It's more the time of actually doing it rather than considering it. So what stops you doing it, knowing you've thought about it long enough? Getting the time between work to be able to do it. Okay, so now we find out an extra element. Okay, where's Phil taking the time away from? Okay, and again, you get a little unconscious thing happening. Okay, right now, Phil is caught in this bind. Okay, this loop we talked about for those who are at Masters. Okay, um, the time Phil has thought about allocating for this issue has been taken away from work. Very common, again, these are all common things. 
for those of us who aren't working as full-time therapists, we might be having a part-time job or doing something else, um, you know you maybe have to go home and call some clients or do some blogging or do some paperwork or things like that, but you get home from work and what do you do? You're tired. You've been working your, your backside off, okay? And what happens to that paperwork and those things? Be silly, or we push them aside, right? And then we say, you know what, I'm going to do it on the weekends. And you wake up Saturday morning, and if I feel laughing, I suggest he's probably thought of that as well. Okay, wake up Saturday morning, what do we say? This is my work, my weekends. It's time for my family and my kids and doing stuff. You know what, I'll do it on Sunday. Okay, Sunday comes along and say, I'm not doing it on Sunday. Sunday, I'm going to go do some fun things. I've got to go to work tomorrow. And you spend all day thinking about work rather than doing the things you should. So... What I'm curious about is why did Phil, why has Phil, this is more of an unconscious thing, why has Phil's unconscious minds chosen and only chosen the time from work? Phil doesn't work 24 hours a day. I know he works hard. Believe me, I know that. But he doesn't work 24 hours a day. So the bind Phil's caught in, and this might actually unblock it a little bit by me saying this, is we need to find out where else does Phil have time that could do those things that doesn't take away from the things that are important. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, and just to clarify where we are, you've got to do work. I understand that. You've got work and things you do, um, but these things seem to happen um, outside of taking the time away from work, right? Mm. Yep. So let me just add, just as a crazy notion, let's just see where this takes us. Where else is the time that you need to do those things but it's not the time you take away from the work you need to do. And bang, right there we have him. I've collapsed that thought process. Now, if you're sitting there going, what? We're only about an hour through this seminar. I will show you how to do this, okay? So what we've taken is this. This is the, the highlighting issues. Phil's only looking at, that's the, the loop he's caught in, only looking at time that he can use from work. If your client finds themselves in that procrastination, I can guarantee in most cases that the only time they have available for them is when they're looking at coming home from work. They're not thinking about the hour they spend at home watching TV doing nothing. They're not thinking about the 10 coffee breaks they have to avoid the work. Well, I can laugh because I used to do this. I know a lot of you guys do this as well. They're not thinking about maybe substituting, and this is nothing against Phil's health or anything like that, substituting maybe one hour a week instead of going to the gym, do the work then and then catch up to gym on the weekends. I don't know any of these things, these things we find out, but right now Phil's caught in that loop of time and work. I just have no other time in my life. Who's got something like that in their life? We all have it, especially as business owners and professionals. We find the only time I can find, I can't find anything else because all I'd seem to do is work and sleep. Who said that excuse before? You don't think about watching Jerry Spring or Oprah if you watch those things. Spending two hours watching those things because you say it's my relaxation time. It's more your avoidance time. Does that make sense? So Phil, when you think about what I said, what just happened then? Um, maybe it's a matter of reorganizing some of my time. Excellent. Got him in a good place. Now, we knew this before, didn't we? You couldn't say it. You tried to make a better list. He said, no, I can't do that. So why is he considering the same thing Krishna was offering his advice before? Because it's logical. Okay? It makes sense unconsciously. Okay? So we'll keep going with this. I don't want to interrupt anymore. So you were saying, what, what happened just then? He said, you had to think maybe about... Maybe I can reallocate. Ah, to find all the places that time exists that you hadn't found yet, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Right? Mm. Because if you find the right time and allocate it appropriately, the fence goes up, the shed goes up, and all those extra bits of time that you'd lost while being stuck in it can only come from work, mm. gives you new places to find things, right? Yeah. Everyone hear that genuine yes? There's something happening. Okay, and right now I'm just overloading him with that time thing. Okay, so how do you feel about the problem right now with the list and the fence and the shed and all that good stuff? Yeah, maybe I can find some other time. And pause it right there. 
our job is complete. Why is our job complete? Thank you. It's possibilities. Just for now, anyway, from this little exercise. Okay? We've opened up his thinking. Whereas before, what was he caught in? What was uh, Phil caught in? It was a time loop. Okay? And it basically came across as, when I come home from work, I'm tired. I know with a conversation with Phil, he works his backside off. I know this. So I'm, I'm not judging him and saying, if I had to work as hard as Phil, I wouldn't do those things either. Okay? Any bit of manual labour that I have to do, I find every excuse not to do it. I can't stand it. And now Phil being physical and doing the things he needs to do, he's got a family to take care of the farm, he's got work, no wonder he's not doing it. We can't blame him. But if those things are important enough, and we'd have to find that out, now his mind's opened up enough to say, you know what, Phil? Do you realise that you're spending an hour watching a TV show that you could put up one part of that fence and be done with it and feel some sort of satisfaction from it? Whereas before, he couldn't see that because he was so caught in, I can only do this stuff, but I can't find the time because all I seem to do is work. Does everyone hear that unfold? It's twisted, isn't it? Yes? Some what, sorry? Yeah, it could be something like that. Yep, there could be anything like that. He would have to express it. Um, there could be some feeling of being ashamed, like I haven't done it, or I'm letting people down, I'm letting myself down. Any of that stuff come up, but Phil would have to express that. Okay? If I start assuming those things, I could go down that road and try and clear that up. But right now, all we've done, and this is what you guys are going to go ahead and do, is I want you to start listening for, when my client talks about my, their problem, are they narrowed down to something? Are they, I'm a smoker and I just can't quit because I've tried everything so narrowed down they're not willing to see outside of what's actually there for them does that make sense as an exercise okay um, so I want you guys to go ahead and do this again it's just listening just have a chat and then what I'm going to do when I give, bring you guys back I'll give you a quick break and then I'm going to stop interrupting the demonstrations we're going to give you guys a full demonstration of how this unfolds and more of an intuitive coaching thing okay who's taking a little bit away so far from this last hour or so okay um, now, that Phil might be done with this. He might come up for a demonstration later and we'll clear all this up. But right now, as long as he's willing to just say, you know what, maybe I could find some time, that's a good place to be. Because okay. from what you said, you kind of give him a, a sneaky suggestion yes. in there yep. that you can put one part of the fence up and feel good. About you pick that up then? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who says he has to do the whole thing at once? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. But we can't tell him this. Mm. Me and Christian knew this at the start, but we can't say to him, hey, Phil, find another place, um, find more time in your life that's not work. Do it then. No, no, I've thought of that. Bullshit. No, you haven't. Mm. But he's not going to tell me this. In this case as well, we can't say to Phil, why not just put up one of the, the pickets of the fence and do that? Do one of those a day. By the end of the year, you have 365 of them. No, that's silly. I might as well do it all at once. And it's just back... Who, I mean, it'd be silly of me to suggest we all do things like this, right? <laughs> okay? So there's nothing new. I'm just highlighting what you're already hearing. Okay? So this, guys, I'm going to give you uh, 10 minutes for this next exercise. Okay? Have a chat, then I'll give you guys a quick break, and then we'll pull up a, a full demonstration and take from there. So just listen. Are they focused on one way? Are they narrowed down? And let's just hear where we go from there, okay? Excellent, guys. Good job. Very well done. Excellent. You guys can continue with that conversation if you want. I don't mind.